So I'm out for another dog walk with Logan and I thought I'd answer a few questions while I was going around as well. Okay, so uh, Marius has asked, what's the most common injuries in training in Thai boxing? I'm talking about training, not fighting. I noticed recently uh, I have a weird pain, uncomfortable feeling in my, in my back and glutes on the right side. It's when I do kicks, it hurts sort of in the low back region. Any ideas what's weak and uh, how to check it? So the uh, yeah injuries that you see in training, I predominantly see it's knees and, and lower backs really. Um, you do see some calf and Achilles, that kind of stuff going on as well. But mostly it's lower back and knees. And the, the common cause of both of those I find is nine times out of 10, probably higher than that. It's actually the hips and how you control that. So if you, uh, if you're poor at extending your hips, what you tend to find is that you send that movement to your lower back instead. So there's extra movement in your lower back, your lumbar spine, whereas your hips should be doing that job. Uh, the other thing that you'll see radiating from the hips out to the knee is that poor control of, uh, of the knee position. So that valgus collapse where it collapses inwards. So I've done some, some articles on these actually before, but um, I'll have to put links to those. But basically, if you're, if you're not good at externally rotating at the hip and driving the knee outwards, it will tend to collapse inwards and that puts a lot of uh, strain into the knee. So other than us actually taking knocks and bangs everywhere, which is a, a big factor in Muay Thai, obviously it's a contact sport, we're taking impacts. It's a, <laughs> as far as contact sports go, it's pretty full on contact. We're gonna get injuries as a result from, from the knocks themselves. There's not a lot we can do about that. You kind of just have to make sure you're protecting your vulnerable areas and not, not taking hits where you're, where you're susceptible to injury. But in terms of your own mechanics making you injured, then go for your hips. In terms of what you can do, how you can check what's weak, um, like one of my favorite actions for the hips is, uh, is the cook hip lift. So it's both a, a diagnostic and it's a corrective movement as well. So if you, if you practice that one, I'll, um, I'll post a video to that on the end of this, on the end of this one. <laughs> what else have we got? Lately, since Christmas and the back pain, I simply got fat. <laughs> um, I'm planning to do Thai boxing three times a week, weights two to three times. My goal would be to lose fat and of course, if possible, to build muscle. Would you follow a basic bodybuilding routine or a more specific, oh, dog dragged me in a puddle, <laughs> or a, a more, more sport specific compound movements, etc.? Well, definitely I'd uh, avoid a bodybuilding routine. It's not really going to help you out too much with your Thai boxing at all. Um, it might help you get some muscle mass on, but it won't be the, the right kind of muscle to improve your functional movement there, and you won't be practicing the movement patterns that you need to generate for Thai boxing as well. In my programs, I always have functional movements that not only train the, the strength that we're trying to develop, but also actually train the, the movement patterns that you use in Thai boxing as well. So it's a chance to rehearse those. So it's skill practice as well as uh, actually trying to get the training effect of either strength, power. It's all about coordinating the, the body together as well. So I've got a, oh, dog's just yakking up a bit of grass, lovely. Come on, <laughs> let me just untangle your legs. Stay there, get on him. Um, yeah, so I've got, a, I've got a routine I did quite a while ago that I posted online, so that I posted on the website. So I'll share that one again. So there's, a, so there's a routine A and routine B that you can work there that will help you out towards those goals. And if you're training twice a week, you just do, so routine A once, once a week, routine B once a week. If you're training three times a week, then just do in, in the first week, routine A, routine B, then routine A again. And then the following week, go routine B, routine A, and then routine B again. So over a two week period, you actually evened up both the sets there. It's important that we actually even up the, the sets of movement patterns that we're using over both those programs. So without those, you'll start creating an imbalance and uh, we're back down the route of injuries again. Okay, the 
the third and final question what's your view on a healthy gut food allergies intolerance etc are there any real proven tests to do to figure out what I'm allergic to well depending on how severely allergic you are then uh, obviously go go and see your doctor they'll they'll do up a proper test where you can have some allergy testing done to really diagnose exactly what you're allergic to and I think generally it tends to be like a, a patch test on your skin where they'll put a whole load of different substances onto the surface of your skin in different patches and basically ring fence them with some, <laughs> with some permanent marker so they know which one was which and you go back after a period of time and they see which ones your skin's actually reacted to and then you do know what, what you're allergic to but uh, otherwise I mean I generally find most people aren't too great with wheat so gluten that can affect you um, and lactose tends to be another one that people can be a little bit sensitive to that they're not, not realizing is just making them feel pretty crappy um, I didn't realize that my body didn't handle those quite as well until I had like um, until depleting my carbohydrates cutting weight for a fight the day before weighing and um, it wasn't until I started reintroducing carbohydrates after the fight that I could feel exactly how each different type of carbohydrate made my body feel so some of them I felt great felt really energetic and then others just made me feel like I had a hangover so just made my stomach feel bad felt really lethargic and headaches headaches that I got especially from the the high glycemic index the simple sugars did really make me feel bad so um, that allowed me to kind of fine-tune things I going from that almost like a clean detox background where I'd taken all of that carbohydrate out as soon as I reintroduced it I could I could see exactly how my body reacted to all the different ones as they went back in so um, that's something uh, you could consider trying especially if you are fighting competitively anyway pro fights with a day before weighing once you come back out of that after the fight then just monitor exactly how the different carbohydrates feel as they go back in but for me wheat uh, as soon as I have that now I've, I feel bad and I recognize the feeling now and I know exactly what that is so I just um, don't overdo that too much if you're, if you're pretty sure what you're consuming is making you feel bad then try cutting it cutting out or reducing the amount of wheat that you have gluten in particular and if you're having plenty of milk that might be another thing just to back off a bit and just see how you feel from that and then just reintroduce it and see see how you go but otherwise go for that um, full-on test from your doctor that will um, that'll really hit the nail on the head for you so well I hope that kind of gets you going a few little questions answered there and I'll concentrate on not letting the dog drag me into anything I don't want to be dragged into over and out.